ערב טוב. היי דפנה. שלום שלום. ערב טוב, גוד איבנינג. הרעיון היום ייערך באנגלית עם יושבת ראש הוועדה המקצועית של התעמלות הנשים ב-FIG, בהתאחדות הבינלאומית להתעמלות. עוד מעט היא תצטרף אלינו. היי קיארה, גוד איבנינג, אני רואה שאתה מבינים. Soon you'll be on here. Let's go. Hello. Hi, here we are. Hey, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Fine. I'll leave you the interview. Okay. Stay by. Stay by. We need you maybe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> next, next to her, okay. Oh, always next to her is the best place. Always next to her, always. Okay. Bye. Good, thank you, Kiara. You're welcome. Good evening, Donatella. Good evening, Ilan. How are you? I'm well, I'm good. You know, uh, Saturday is, uh, is a good day. It's, uh, it's a free day in Israel, so, you know, it's always good to have a free day. By the way, While we are speaking, I see that uh, the spectators and the followers are joining us, and I saw your colleague, Mr. Artur Mitzkevich, is also listening and watching us, so... <laughs> okay, good. So, Donatella, this interview is uh, actually a project that I started about a year ago uh, when the COVID-19 started, maybe a little bit more than a year. Uh, and I started to interview uh, athletes, Olympic athletes from all over the world, and of course uh, judges and coaches from our world of gymnastics, not only gymnastics, some other kind of sport and disciplines. And um, actually it became uh, pretty, pretty known and pretty um, popular because this interview that we are doing now will also show up on YouTube, And will stay forever on Instagram so uh, people that wants to to see you in here and, and learn a little bit more about you they can do it in the future also okay <laughs> I will pay attention <laughs> <laughs> okay so actually uh, why did I want to interview you it's not only because you are the president of the technical committee in the FIG for the WAG for the women's gymnastics and But because uh, from what I've heard from people around the world that knows you and, uh, or they think they know you, that you are a very interesting person. And I would like the spectators to know a little bit more about you, about your career, about how you started all this. Um, and, and what do you think about the future? So first, before I start, I promised Orna your best friend from Israel, that I will send you all her love and kisses. And she says, you know, she's, she's crazy about you. Just, just for you to know from the beginning. I love Orna. I love her very much. She was uh, one of my first friends uh, when I became an international judge. So I cannot forget uh, how much she helped me. Good. So, Donatella, uh, where, where it started? I mean, when you were a child, where were you born and your parents? I, I, I want to know really from the very beginning. <laughs> so my story, I don't know. Uh, many times I think that uh, is a, a story because um, I had the chances in my life. So I was um, a normal kid, not uh, loving sport very much. I love much more uh, reading and studying, but, but uh, my parents were coaches in gymnastics. So one day my mom said, okay, you are uh, a boring daughter, so you have to come to the gym and at least to do something physical. So this started when I was around nine, 10 years old, very late for a gymnast mm -hmm. at the time. 
Um, okay, I went to the gym, not loving very much uh, to be tired and <laughs> challenges with the apparatus uh, every day, physical preparation, but uh, just uh, having fun. And actually, my parents uh, didn't care much about me. I was not really a talented uh, gymnast. My colleagues are much better than me. Uh, at that time in Italy, we had uh, team competitions. And uh, when I was 10 years old, one of the teammates had a small injury. I was good in legs. So my mom said, okay, we need one volter. You come and do volt. Okay, for one volt, I can do. And this was the starting of my gymnastics career, actually. Then... When I was, but, but your, your pa- sorry, your parents were your coaches during all this time, until yeah. until the age of ten years old. You didn't go to the gym with them. It was their job. You probably went there, no? Or you you prefer to stay at home? Uh, no, I was there uh, since I was born because uh, I was there because they were there. Yeah. Anything, absolutely not gymnastic, playing, uh, reading books, uh, my normal okay. life actually, a normal kid life without any sport. Then after this uh, vault, I continue to practice a little bit. And uh, uh, my parents receive a call from the national uh, coach in the age group. And they said, okay, we are starting regional training camps. uh, So we would like to test uh, Donna, your daughter. I went there, I moved forward, I arrived to the national group, still age group, but I didn't want to stay there in Rome. (laughs) (laughs) Far from the family. So I called my father, I said, listen, I can clean house every day, but I want to come back home. Because I didn't like also very much to help my mom in the home uh, cleaning. Okay, my dad come, take me back home. And uh, the national team said, okay, Donna, bye-bye. Forget uh, the national team for your entire life. You are oh my fine. I was not crying at all. I continue my gymnastics. Uh, I started to go to high school, which was, uh, I choose the school I prefer. And when I was um, 15, the national team called me again for a selection for the Mediterranean Games. And I said to my mom, okay, let's go. First day, terrible day, fall. I said, mom, doesn't matter. Let's go. And we spoke all the night. Okay, tomorrow at the time was compulsory and optionals. We spoke all the night, okay, tomorrow optionals, doesn't matter. The others are much better than me. And we enjoy the night uh, speaking, laughing. In the morning, I go, I do my routines. And then, oops, and then uh, waiting for the selection. I was totally relaxed. I had already my train ticket to go back home from Rome. And suddenly the national coach said, okay, you are part of the team. You come with us to the national training camp. I went to Hungary with them for a training and then the Mediterranean Games. The Italian team uh, has team uh, reached gold. So we were really happy. And after this, I started the selection for uh, the Olympic Games. And Montreal, 1976, I was in the team after two injuries, uh, both help of, but, oh my God. Yeah, but nothing but very serious. I need, I need to know, I need, uh, as far as I understand from what you are uh, telling me, Donna, is that the fact that you took this, uh, you know, you are in, in so many years in gymnastics, and so am I, and we know gymnasts, and we know coaches, and we know people that are involved. So many people in gymnastics are so fanatic and so crazy about everything. And when you're talking to me now about your starting career, you sound so relaxed. You took it like in propor- proportion 
okay, if it will be, it will be. If not, I will go back home. And maybe this is one of the reasons for your success, to get to the Olympics. I don't know. But uh, really, I never took uh, very seriously. So never thinking I can be part of the team. I see the other girls better than me. So I was realistic. I do my best. If it's okay, it's okay. If not, it doesn't matter. My problem mostly was training with the parents. This was terrible because uh, my mom especially was uh, the general in the family. Yeah. So I remember how much I cried because my mom was uh, very tough, not in training, but really in education. Also, yes, in uh, uh, follow the rules, uh, study. Uh, so, yes, in education, she was tough. Not uh, only mm. gymnastics, it's uh, the behavior for her. So, yes, I cry quite uh, a lot, not specific for gymnastics. Because when yes. I'm the national team with the national coach, I enjoy so much. Because <laughs> when you finish the training, it's finished. When I was with, with my parents, finish the training. You, you go home and you still. Again, you didn't do this. Now you have to do that. Did you finish to study? Always rules. Yes. So, for me, it was a fantastic time, actually. I know, I know what you're talking about because I, I had my, my, my son who was a gymnast in the national team and I was his coach. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to go back home. I remember my wife, Limor, was telling us, stop talking about gymnastics. Now you're eating, you're... He has to, to do his homework. Is that why gymnastics, gymnastics all the time? Yeah, it's, it's really not easy to be uh, a father or mother and, and, and a coach at the same time. And of, of course, for you as a child, it was very, very difficult. From which city you are? I'm from uh, Novara. It's a city about 50 kilometers from Milan, North Italy. Okay, so, uh, so you trained over there. Your parents had a gym over there? My parents had a gym which is um, a slightly different system. Uh, here we are not owner of the gym. There is a structure with the president, with the board. Uh, and uh, yes, you, you are part of the board uh, because everybody is a small city, our friends. Uh, but uh, it's not really the private club system as you can imagine like a fitness center. It's, it's mm -hmm different structure mm -hmm. and when, when you were raised as a child you you have uh, brothers sisters also went to gymnastics how was it i had a brother i have a brother still but uh, at that time yes also doing gymnastics uh, three years younger and um, he was uh, good because he had also a very good coach but uh, we have a uh, fun from that time from Olympics, because then I started to play a little bit tennis with him, going skiing. And uh, anytime he says, till now, you were lucky to choose gymnastics because you can do only gymnastics. Nothing. <laughs> he was good at any sport, volleyball, handball, uh, skiing, tennis, uh, gymnastics. And he says to me, you were really lucky to have gymnastics in your life. You can do only gymnastics. So, Donna, tell, tell me, tell me, how was the feeling as a gymnast to enter the Olympic Stadium uh, in 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 Montreal '76 to com to compete in this unforgettable competition with Nadia? Uh, it, it's probably amazing, no, for, for a gymnast from, from Italy who didn't want to be in the national team and somehow she got there. Yeah, it was a, a big emotion because uh, you cannot imagine. At that time, it's not like today that you see many things. Uh, you have uh, the social media, you have YouTube. Uh, so the only time I saw Olympics was on TV, 1972. Never imagined to be there. So... When you are there, probably you even don't realize uh, where you are. So for me, it was, oh, God, I'm here. You cannot express anything. So, yeah, 
and I had birthday at the Olympics. What what age? Yeah, uh, I was uh, 17 at the time. Ooh, so young, my god. Yeah. My god. And uh, my coach was a Hungarian coach and uh, every time ta- every time there is a birthday in the village, they make parties and uh, my coach Hungarian style at the time, you know, this was the style. She said, yes. "You cannot go because you cannot eat the cake." What? Is my <laughs> Here in Montreal, uh, the doctors of the Italian uh, delegation called me, told to my coach that uh, I need some treatment. They closed the door and gave me ice cream because it was my Oh birthday. my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is a nice memory, huh? Yeah, really nice. And how was the, co- the competition itself? Uh, the competition was nice. Uh, usually, I did what I had to do. At that time, uh, when you receive the average uh, of nine, uh, you receive a special pin from FIG. So I got yeah. the special pin high-class gymnast doing uh, actually not much. But I was one of the first in Italy to do the flip-flack on the beam. We were only two. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I did good. Today, oh, no, you, are, you are so modest. You are so modest. My God. But it's true. On vault, I did the Yamashita. Nothing to put Simon Biles, yes. double pike uh, backward. And with Yamashita, yes. I got a 930. Can you imagine? Yes. Well, at that time, I mean, when, even if you look at Nadia's routines from that time, then you see that they, they are so simple concerning the difficulty. You know, and, and, you, you, and you can even see some mistakes that today we would deduct them if you would not get a 10, you know, at, at, at the, if we, we judge today. But it was, it was Nadia at that time. She was, you know, she, she's a legend. And, and you are lucky to compete with her at the same, on the same uh, podium. Yeah, this is amazing. And so for how long after Olympics you continue to train as a gymnast? Um, I did only the national championships in December, and then uh, I stopped. I want to eat chocolate. I want to eat sweets. And as a <laughs> I have limited uh, possibilities. So um, I said, okay, maybe I go back to my life. And I started to be a coach in the gym, uh, slowly, slowly growing new generations. So, so actually, you saw, you saw yourself, uh, you saw your career in the future in, in, in gymnastics as a coach. No. Uh, no. no. So what, what was your dream? My dream was to go to university, to study foreign languages in uh, Venice, to study mm-hmm. Chinese, Arabic, Russian, these strange languages, and become really? interpreter, maybe in Bruxelles. This was my dream. But again, my mom, the general, said, uh, no, you stay here. You don't go to Venice. If you want to go to university, you go to Milan. And so I stay home, uh, working in the gym, studying in Milan, uh, normal life. And, and when was the first time you realized that uh, you want to be a judge? Or it was during the coaching like everybody else? This was another chance in my life. Uh, before um, the um, World Championships in Hungary, I think it was... Uh, Budapest, 83. Okay. I was, I was a gymnast there, so I know. I was a coach and a gymnast uh, in the team. So mm-hmm. we, uh, we, at that time, were very friendly, till now, with the Hungarian Federation. So we arrived there one week before to train with them and to have a match already in the competition hall of the World Championships. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I went with the girls, training ready for competition, and our judges didn't arrive. So the head judge came to me and said, do you know the code of points? I said, yes. So now you sit here and you are a judge. But I have <laughs> no Italian brevet at all. Zero. 
Don't worry, you know everything for sure. Sit and judge. Okay, I sit there judging. We did words, we were back home. And he said, okay, now you take the brevet, it's much better. So I started wow. national, national, and I arrived in uh, 1993 to the international brevet. My <laughs> God. You, you know that it's funny because um, I, was, I was a gymnast in, in 83. I came, I came to Budapest as a reserve gymnast. I remember this world championship because it was with the Chinese, with Li Ning, Kong Fei, all this from men's gymnastics, and, and, uh, and of course, Vilozerche from Russia. Uh, and and uh, you were there really as a young coach. You were only 24 years old. And, uh, and this was your first experience as a judge. Did, did you realize at that time <laughs> that, that this is what you're going to, to do for the rest of your life? No, because I didn't like uh, judging. My mom was a judge, international judge. So I learned from her when uh, we are home. And uh, actually, I never uh, thought I can be a judge. It was not my idea. I like to be a coach, not a judge. But again, mm -hmm. destiny moved me in another direction. Because she was DNA. Of course. It's DNA. She's the best in the world. I we I know. I admire her, Kiara. You cannot imagine. And every every person that I'm speaking about Donna is saying the same thing. She is amazing, she's wonderful, she's smart, she's intelligent, everything. You I love her. You cannot accept escape to, to your destiny and she's amazing and she's the best you cannot I, I i agree i agree i think that the fate fate is always above us and and the thing with with your mom is that when you know there is a story about somebody that uh let's say god throw some some stones on the on the floor on his way and he knew how to to bend down and pick them up and use them for his life. And this is what you did. You had the chances, Donna, and you, take, you took them. You didn't let it go by your side. You, you took the chances. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I leave all the things on backstage. <laughs> I studied with her when she said, sorry if I interrupt, but I have- No, to... don't worry, it's good, it's good. Because she is. Uh, in my life, uh, I saw a lot of things in the world, and I know Orna. I love Orna as an uncle, you know. And yes. I saw my mother studying, but passion, life, DNA, it's another thing. She has in her blood, you know. Yes, from your grandparents. Her blood. I live her uh, in the China in the 2008, before the Olympic Games, 2007, because it was December, the pre Olympic. Uh -huh. I was on the bus and everybody listened to <laughs> her like um, like the virgin, you know, the, no. like, uh, no. No, yes, everybody was ma magical on when she, uh, she spoke, uh, you know, like, it's still, the, it's still the same. We, we went to the, to the great wall, great wall and uh, all the judges uh, spoke uh, about uh, the angles, on, an angles even on the even bar. Yeah. And everybody talking, what, but when mom talk, silence, you know. Of course. Of course. It's magic in her of, job. Of course. And, she, and you know. And, and... Because she's my mom. But because I leave her studying. You know, work is a thing, but passion is another thing. Mommy has passion. Grazie. Chiara, when I see you and I listen to you, I know that she succeeded in her life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the great promoter of my mom. When we are not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> it, mom, and we are similar, too it, much. That's why we it's, grew up. It's a, it's a bless, it's a bless, it's a bless. <laughs> She's wonderful. <laughs> so, Donna, so then you started to judge. Uh, after this uh, competition in Hungary, you, you, you made your first brevet. 
and and you become uh, just a judge or you continue to coach the, the, during these years no oh, i continue to coach i continue to coach until uh, 2004 there was a moment i had the seven gymnasts in the national team uh, group mhm mm and uh, i became also national coach i knew my husband there so also we is 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 also a coach yes he was also a coach yes now he is a, a let's say team manager of the women artistic italian team oh ah, okay so he's still involved very much do you get to do you get to travel together sometimes with the team uh doha world championships i was uh, with fig and i was with the italian team but we that's never... nice Oh, uh, only two times in competition from one side to the other. <laughs> okay. Of course, of course. So, I, what how was it uh I remember that uh, on the news I I heard uh, we all of us heard so many uh hard things about um situation in Italy during the COVID-19. How did it affect the sport in Italy and gymnastics at all and i want also your point of view about world gymnastics and and the affection of this covid-19 about gymnastics uh covid uh, created a very difficult time for uh, sport in general uh gymnastics is a, an indoor sport so even more difficult in italy they closed the gym at the beginning totally closed all sports all the gyms nobody could go for 2 3 months then through the even 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 the national team even olympic team everybody everything wow uh, then through the olympic committee at least the gymnasts in national team could start to train in this uh, bubble we call yeah. this bubble yes. the uh, word uh, we use everywhere yes so they started again to be in training uh, but as you can imagine uh, was very difficult also because uh, when they are training they could not do uh, full training because the hospital were uh, very busy with the covid so nobody mm -hmm. could go into hospitals and the worries was if i have an injury where i go i can even yeah. not go there nobody can come in inside our national training center everybody was closed there so even the parents leave uh, the bags with the clothes outside and uh, the girls took in when the parents go uh, it was uh, really really difficult for uh, all the sport and uh, till uh, two months ago no gymnastic for fun so we had uh, only the competing gymnasts and this affected the economy of uh, all the clubs because the clubs are uh, surviving with their from, from the from the yes so no government uh, influence economical influence so it was very very hard for them and uh, with uh, this uh, uncertain future because at that time we didn't know what anything about olympics yes no was a big question mark uh, every day we didn't know increasing every day the number of the people dying one day was 1000 in one day italy is not a such a big population yes uh we uh at that moment we didn't know if uh, uh we can continue or the government is going back to close uh, again this was an up and down but athletes are competitors strong character so i think around all the world the focus on uh, their goals still stay and even difficult time they could go more and more every day okay one day gone next day going day by day finally now we know that the dream of uh, all athletes 
is very close. It yeah. will be a strange Olympics, actually. Yes. Something to remember because totally different from any other. I hope the first and the last like this. Even we are not sure about the future. But at least we can give uh, to the athletes uh, their dreams. And this for me is the most important. I can run even uh, the competition online, but I yes. would like them to be there and be happy anyway, be happy because they are in the history. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, feel, I feel the same. It's, it's just that I, I wonder, what do you think about the level of gymnastics in these Olympics? I mean, we both have seen the, the last European championships and some World Cups that we had around the world. Uh, it seems like the gymnasts are in pretty good shape, in, in good level. So, but do you think do you think it could be different if it was uh, a year ago? Yes, for me, yes. But it's my personal opinion, because uh, in that moment uh, everybody was really focused, and uh, you know the planning of the training is very important in our sport. So, yes. the supposed to arrive to one year ago. Now this year broke a little bit all the rules. So to recover from difficult situation is not the same like one year ago. Gymnasts yeah. are ready because uh, they want to go and compete. Actually, I can say also that at the end, if I can see the positive of this uh, strange time, uh, gymnasts uh, not having competition, instead of just uh, doing routines, started to try new elements. New I elements. Many, yeah, many requests of new elements. So it means that going a little bit out of the routine moved them. And to keep motivated, they started to try new elements here, new elements there, and to have a, a little bit extra motivation. This yeah. is the positive of this. We have a comment from Estela from Mexico. Mm. She's writing, congratulations, Donatella, for all your fantastic work in women's gymnastics, artistic gymnastics. Greeting from Mexico. Mexico, Ilan and Donna. Thank you, Estela. We love you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I love you. Donna, so, so um, what, what did, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the changing of the code of points now with the new new cycle is it true that uh, uh you postpone in the fig the the, the next brevet to 2022 the next intercontinental uh, uh examination uh is one of the option we are um, discussing a lot about these uh, judges courses one thing is i can give a 90 percent sure the new code will go into effect uh, from 1st Janu January 2022 because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we want to move to the new rules, all disciplines. About the judges' courses, this is still a big uh, question mark. On the table, there are many options with pro and cons for any because uh, we have to consider that uh, this COVID still affects the traveling affects uh, the judges from uh, all around the world moving because mm -hmm. you now has this uh, green pass so we can move um, quite freely among uh, mm -hmm. European countries but uh, from uh, overseas is very difficult. Australia is still uh, in a quarantine period when they are back uh, two weeks. Mexico has problem to come into uh, Europe. Brazil. Brazil. India is another one at the moment banned. Even Great Britain now coming to Italy, they have five days quarantine because this yeah. station, the, the Delta. Yes. So arriving to December, November, December 2022, probably we are in these conditions. And we really don't know if from here, when we open, because in Europe now we open almost everything, to autumn, there will be an increase of cases 
and we have to come back again. This yeah. is another big question mark affecting the, any preview for the future. We are trying to find the best solution for the judges. We not be the ideal solution, but uh, uh, we have to consider that the less wars will be uh, acceptable. And I hope everybody can understand the difficult situation. I'm just thinking about uh, the situation that we will start judging uh, from uh, 2020, uh, let's say after the World Championship in Japan that we have after Olympics, still with the, the old code of points. Then we will start in January with the new one without, without examinations. Uh, how, can, how can you as a technical committee control the, the, ju the judgment, the judging during competition live, you know, of course you'll have, you'll be supervisor everywhere, but you know, if you don't have a, a goal and examination, some, let's say some judges will not uh, read and, and learn the, the new code of points as they should. This is the, the weak part. You just touch the weak part of uh, all the system. Because about uh, instructions, uh, we are planning to give online instructions. With this mm -hmm. technology now, it's possible to run a lecture online. But uh, yes, the weak point is the exam, to test the judges about their knowledge. Because I'm sure that the judges are uh, confident and uh, that they want to know and to feel prepared. So I'm sure that they will go even in this uh, online lecture, they will study, they can send a question and we and receive answer from us. So this uh, interaction will still be there. But to assign categories, you are totally right. We, uh, in some way, we have to test them if they understood totally the rules or uh, is necessary some more clarification. Here, yeah. not yet uh, an answer. It's a, it's a compromise. It's, it's a, you, actually, you are compromising with the situation, and this is the best you can bring out from this, uh, you know, uh, how to say it. It's, it's a, a rare, it's a very unique situation, mm -hmm. and uh, you try to do your best at, at this point. But, of course, it's not idealistic it's not it's not the best it's not the best but uh, also this cycle is only three years so in some way we will try the way to survive donna how do you see uh gymnastics from here let's say uh in 10 years from now what what in your mind will change um concern women's gymnastics uh how, where do you see the line of, of gymnastics from here and on? Uh, I see that, uh, but it's just my opinion again. Yes, yes. Uh, not in short time, but in long time, gymnastics uh, should change. Because the society uh, changed a lot. We see that uh, now we are in the fast world, fast track, uh, uh, fast food, uh, fast everything. You change telephone fast as you change the clothes almost every day. Kids are not the same. They don't want to have a sacrifice. Uh, they want to get things uh, quite uh, fast again. Yeah. The main world. And uh, it's difficult for them to understand the still sport is a uh, hard work, actually. For me, is uh, from the education point of view, sport is still very important in the life of the kids. Doesn't matter the level you reach. I don't care Olympics, not Olympics. But as education is very important because uh, still there are rules. Families today are uh, very careful with the kids, but because the economy most of the time, both parents have to work. So the sport can support the kids physically, 
because also the food is not the same as before. So they eat sometimes not really healthy food, sometimes. But uh, again, being in sport, create you education also, what is good to eat, what you need for your body. Teach you that anytime you fall, you have to stand up again. The world doesn't finish with a mistake or with a problem. Problems, as my husband says to me, are only problem when no solution. Mostly, if there is a solution, it's not a problem. Of course, you have to work to find a solution. It's not coming as a present. And this is the sport. There are no presents in the sport. You have to work to reach your goal. And this, for me, is an important uh, education part uh, for our kids. Yes, I believe, I believe the same as you, that uh, sport uh, give the, the children the tools for life, the discipline, uh, to know how to manage their time, and, and so many good things. But I totally agree with you because I work, I still work with little kids and with young people. And I, I, I see the, 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 how they want everything instant, everything quickly. Like you said, I, I'm absolutely, totally agree with you. It's very hard. But when you say we need to change uh, in, 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 the, in gymnastics, for example, what can we do? Okay, there is another question that you heard many times in your life, I'm sure, that people, the, the normal spectator, let's say now in, in Tokyo, people will sit all over the world. They have the, the Olympics has the most uh, rating around the world in, uh, for spectators on TV. They don't understand the, the, the results. What is 15, 14, 13? Uh, so if you can take this point and also what do you mean about, about changing uh, when, when this all world changing, what, what can we do? about it, I about have, gymnastics. Ilan, I have no idea. I'm honest. I'm thinking and thinking. I know that uh, a change should be. And uh, probably it's a long process. Uh, today we are trying to have back, at least in women artistic, this uh, femininity, beauty, grace, because you are moving to difficulty, which is good because uh, it's the wow for the public. But yes. uh, also our part, our nature is important to save the identity of my discipline. And this is also important. I'm thinking and thinking, and uh, I'm not the president who can find a solution. Probably some more young uh, with uh, new ideas, uh, some out of the box, uh, has to come after me or even after after me. But I'm convinced that uh, in one moment uh, we have to change something. How? Yeah. No idea. Yeah, I, I, I had in a certain, in a certain time, uh, because I'm thinking, you know me, we know each other for many years. I'm, I'm a coach, I'm a judge. I work also on TV. Uh, so I see also the point of view of TV and and I, I take the whole combination of, of what I'm doing in my life, and I think that we should do in FIG, for example, a brainstorm with with gymnasts, with coaches, with judges, and with TV people, and 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 uh, and uh, media like uh, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, all these all these things that we don't understand. You and me, it's not our generation, but we we have to take also these young kids to think with us about how, how to give uh, gymnastics a new way and maybe to improve it, to, to be uh, su suitable for, for uh, this generation. And uh, yes, it's, it's, you're right. It's a big, big, big difficult, uh, you know, a thing to, to think about and, and to solve it. it it's going to take time for sure. Yeah. But you have to consider that uh, artistic gymnastics in, in this case, because I speak about artistic, is one of the most popular sports. So as basic of the sports, uh, okay, swimming, everybody must know how to swim. And this is because you must know how you go to bike 
you know how to swim. Yeah. But the kids love gymnastics, love because not because they see on TV, but because they like to know even a normal cartwheel. You see kids in the park trying to do cartwheel, even yeah. coming from gymnastics, because it's in the nature of the kids to move, yes. run. Uh, and this is artistic gymnastics, the roles, they like this. And we attract a lot of kids and we have to satisfy them, to make them happy. And there is a moment when we lose them because the gap probably is too high. I think that uh, we should find solution. But as I said, I'm not the president who can do it. Donna. Um, we are almost at the end of our interview and I would like you to, to uh, say a few things to young kids that are starting gymnastics, that are starting the life, uh, or to young gymnasts that already started, like your point of view about what needs to be done to, to achieve your goal, to achieve your dream. First, uh, love what you are doing. This is the first. And the second, never give up. In the life, there is always a chance. You don't know what is around the corner. And this, when I'm depressed, this is what I tell me. Don't give up. You don't know when you turn the corner what is after this difficult uh, moment. It's difficult. Yes, sometimes the life is very difficult but it's the life. So if you start to know that, as I said, is a problem today, but you have a solution tomorrow, you grow up, maybe not elite athletes. I never dreamed to be an elite athlete. But you see, I had a chance. I was not the best in my group. Everybody left. And at the end, I was in the team because <laughs> I was there. <laughs> So um, think positive and uh, wait for the future. You have to work for your goal. And the goal when I was a coach is uh, to work with people with motivation. Doesn't matter talent, no talent, because everybody has a target. And the moment all athletes uh, can uh, reach the target, they are already winners. Yeah, you see, you see it in, in their eyes. I mean, when you work with gymnasts, with, uh, with the young girls or young boys, you can see immediately who really has the passion, who really wants to be something and to work hard for it. Uh, Even yeah. the cartwheel is already a goal. It's good. So teach yes. them what they are dreaming for. Yes, for sure. Donna, uh, I, I just want to say something personally uh, without... Uh, without talking too much, but just telling you that I know that you are a winner uh, in your in your life, and uh, I'm, I learn a lot from you. Even though we are not talking every day, but I know about you, and I read about you, and I hear about you, and you're you're a model for me and for others too. And uh, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you agree to to talk to me and uh, to have this interview. Uh, for me, it's important because I, I believe that, as, as Kiara said, you deserve it. You deserve much more than this because you are a very modest person. And but, but I want people to see you, to listen to what you have to say, even those sentences at the end. If some kids will hear it and it will affect them and do something for them, then I achieve my goal. And thank you so much. Grazie. We love you. All World of Gymnastics love you. So many, many kisses. Toda raba, Ilan. Grazie mille. It was nice uh, to have this interview and have this opportunity. We are friends, uh, Ilan. So for you, of course, it's of course. a pleasure uh, to do it. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in, in uh, Olympics. You'll be there. Uh, at least if you see me in Zoom, for sure. <laughs> then okay, I okay. Of play. <laughs> of okay. Play. Okay, Donna. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. 
say hello again to Kiara and thank thank her for the Instagram. Thank you, Kiara. We'll stay in touch. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. 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 Thank, thank you, Kiara. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.